I once was working in a training and I, I got it after uh, Gabi Yaron died and I got asked to be the educational director of the training. Gabi was one of Moshe's Israeli students. And I would come into the class and I would sit, but I would never ring a bell and I'd never call people back. Because I figured there's no reason to ring bells because it's not school. I don't, you, it's your, your training. So at the end of the training, this woman sent a bill to the training for, for all the time that, that didn't take place and was, and was trying to bill me because of, because all the time I didn't teach. And I said, was I never not there? Whose responsibility was it to bring the class together? Why is it mine? Yeah, so. Oh, well, here we are. Please stand up. We, 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 we go, we go and we get entranced very easily in this work. I just said we needed the mats. I didn't. <laughs> Please take a moment and, and observe yourself in the sense of how much room you take up in the room. What is your sense of stature at this moment? And I want to invite you to invite to look at not only your sense of stature, which means the, the sense of your physical quality in the room, but the dimensional sense. And what I mean by dimension is, you know, there's, there's a very, it's very clear that when you're closed down, the world closes in on you. When you're quite open and awake and, and, and very comfortable in yourself, then you, those, the sense of yourself in space is, is quite different. So tune into your sense of yourself in space. And in tuning into yourself, where is it easiest for your senses to go? Is it easier for your senses to move forward or to move back? Is it easier to sense yourself upwards or downwards? Do you have as clear a representation of space in front of you? Or do you have a clearer representation of space behind you? And when you think of reaching backwards with your senses behind you, where do you use to sense? The back of your head, your neck, your back? Is there any real sense of the space behind your knees, behind your ankles? When we ask these questions from the point of view of, of this, this sense of dimension, oftentimes people have a very like a, a bubble of experience. If you were to turn your attention into the room, would it be easier for you to attend to the space to the right or to the left? On which side do you have a sense that you reach out more easily? Which side do you have a sense that perhaps you're pulling the space into you? These are interesting kinds of questions. What's the distance to the ceiling? What's the distance to the nearest person around you? How far is it to the, to the back wall from where you are? Which wall is easier to experience, to the right or to the left? If you, could, if you could somehow show the shape of the bubble of your senses, what would your bubble look like? Maybe more to the front, less to the back, maybe more to the right, less to the left. What would your bubble be like? All right, keep yourself, keep a sense of how it is that you are now. Please come and lie.
You're welcome to bend your knees and bring your feet to standing. And for a moment, simply exhale. Exhale and wait. Between the exhalation and the inhalation, take a moment and do nothing. Do nothing that you know. Simply be in the space between, between the activities. Exhale for a moment and wait. And find the earliest moment. Sense within yourself the earliest moment that you can sense the beginning of your inhalation. Exhale, wait, and wait. And as you become more accustomed to this, you can find yourself waiting in the space between for longer and longer periods of time. There's a particular quality of mental quietness. Exhale and wait. You don't need to have your thinking mind to notice the first moment that your inhalation begins. And since where does it begin? Where does your inhalation begin? <clears throat> Inhale and wait. Excuse me. Exhale and wait. And do not let thinking arise. Just simply wait and find within yourself how to inhibit thought. And make three or four rounds like this of exhaling and waiting, observing the beginning of your inhalation, following your inhalation as it comes, and then exhaling again in quietness. Exhale and wait and observe. As your inhalation begins, notice what takes place with your floating ribs. What takes place at the small of your back? Notice as you make the movement of inhaling whether your lower back and your floating ribs lift away from the floor or expand away from the expand back and toward the floor.
And for the moment, please, exhale, wait for a moment. And as you inhale, notice, make it, make it clear that you're going to lift your lower back away from the floor, that you're going to lift your floating ribs away from the floor. And discover which side lifts first. As you inhale, lift so that you can sense which side is more available. It's only a few millimeters of lift. It's not a big rolling of your pelvis. And then please shift so that you lift the other side of your back. And notice what you have to do to stop the habitual. To inhibit what's habitual and to wait for a moment and watch the change in organization. Watch the actual motor plan, the seeking within yourself as to how you're going to lift the other side. And please make it so that when you inhale now that you lift the other side several times. And notice how different this is. And please inhale in such a way that when you'd make this movement that you alternate. One time on the side that's familiar and one time on the side that's unfamiliar. until gradually you have a sense that when you inhale, you can lift both sides in such a way that you experience it as familiar. It's not the right and it's not the left. It's not this, it's not that. That with your attention, you bring about a sense that you lift your floating ribs evenly as you inhale. So you exhale, wait, and as your inhalation rises, you lift your floating ribs away from the floor. And as you lift your floating ribs away from the floor, you also listen now to the movement that your sternum makes. In what direction does your sternum move? And if you're really, really attentive to this, you can notice whether your sternum, whether you have a preference for your sternum to move a little to the right or to the left. Is it easier for this movement to take your, to move your sternum towards your right shoulder or your left? So inhale and lift your ribs and observe the direction that your sternum moves. And after a moment, please, Initiate the movement of the inhalation in such a way that your sternum lifts your floating ribs. Invite your sternum to lift your floating ribs. 
so that you can sense the tone, the particular tension within yourself. As you lift your sternum to lift your floating ribs, which side does it pick up more easily? Which side does it engage more freely? Inhale, and with your sternum lifting your floating ribs, find how to lift both of them. Not the right and not the left, but that your sternum finds and is connected to a particular kind of symmetry that invites both sides of your ribs to lift. And please alternate. One time, lift your floating ribs to move your sternum. And one time, invite your sternum to lift your floating ribs. And one time, engage or invite your sternum and your floating ribs to lift together. Not one more than the other. <clears throat> and please rest for a moment and observe within yourself. As you rest, observe within yourself the sense of space that you have within your torso. The internal, internal sense of space that you have. And observe very carefully the amount of mental activity that you have taking place. Notice the quality of your experience. Leave it for a moment and rest. Roll to your side if you wish. Please come back. Exhale and wait. And this time with your inhalation, expand your floating ribs backwards toward the floor. And you can sense which side of your lower back expands back more freely. That your attention can move to with greater clarity.
and make one or two movements into the side that's easy, available. And then take a moment and explore how to make the movement into the other side. Find what you must do to discover how to make the movement into what's unfamiliar. It means to stop what you know and for a moment listen within yourself as the new intention spreads into yourself and so that you can listen with your senses as to whether or not if you've been accurate or not. And inhale and expand back onto one side and then inhale and expand back into the other side. until you can inhale and expand back into both sides. You make the distinction, the difference, smaller and smaller. Until more or less you can sense that both sides expand evenly and equally. The internal space, it's not tinged with right or left or not tinged with a particular kind of tension. And as you're expanding back like this, observe for yourself in what direction does your sternum move. And you can place your fingers on your sternum if you wish. And what would you do if or if, if the person or you're being touched by yourself or if a practitioner was there to touch you, what would the practitioner do to touch your sternum in such a way that it would invite your lower ribs to expand backwards? In what direction would your sternum move? It would move downward, but it would also have some kind of a backwards pressure a little bit. So engage in this movement or Invest in this movement, invite this movement in such a way that you initiate the movement with your sternum so that your sternum moves in such a way that it invites your lower ribs to expand backwards as you inhale. And please alternate. One time expand your ribs backward in such a way that it invites your sternum to move. And the next time, please initiate the movement with your sternum so that it invites your floating ribs to expand backwards. So alternate between initiating the movement with your ribs and with your sternum. And now please alternate. Inhale once in such a way that your lower ribs lift. And the next time, inhale in such a way 
that your lower ribs expand backwards. And once again, please, rest and do nothing that you know. Do nothing that you know to breathe. Quietly be there as your breath comes and goes. And again, listen to the internal sense of space within you. Exhale and wait and find out if there's not some difference in the waiting. Leave it and rest. Roll to your side if you wish. Take a moment and rest. Please return. Exhale and observe the direction that your lower ribs move. Exhale and expand your lower ribs backwards. Breathe, exhale and expand backwards to one side. Expand backwards to the other side. And notice within yourself the difference in the sense of familiarity, the sense of ease, what's readily known and what's a distant cousin. You may not find the movement for several attempts. If you listen very, very carefully to the side that's easy, you can begin to bring that which is easy across the midline to the other side. Exhale and as you expand your lower ribs, find out how your sternum participates. Bring again your fingers to your sternum if you wish. And what movement would you make with your sternum that would invite you to exhale, or excuse me, to, yeah, to exhale and to expand your lower ribs backwards? For many, this isn't such an easy movement because of the rigidity, the way that we have to maintain our sternum to give ourselves a sense of protection or strength. So sometimes it's not so easy for our sternum to be soft enough that you can actually make this movement so that your ribs move freely backwards.
and alternate this. Exhale and move your floating ribs backwards and invite your sternum to come along. And the next time, initiate the movement with your sternum to move your floating ribs backwards. Leave it and rest. What's happening to the elasticity in the inner walls of your torso? What's happening with the way the air enters into you? This time, please exhale and lift your lower ribs away from the floor. Maybe you can sense along one side of your spine or sense something in your lower back or something in the way that you experience your abdomen or your ribs on one side that gives you a clue as to which side lifts first. Which side more powerfully contracts? And which side is the tonus increased more in order for you to lift? Exhale and lift one side and then find within yourself, how can you lift the other side? How can you bring the unfamiliar into the movement? What direction must your sternum move if you're going to exhale and lift your lower ribs? Initiate the movement with your sternum so that when you exhale, it lifts. Your sternum invites your lower ribs to lift. Which side is it more connected to, the right side or the left side of your lower ribs? Which side? And please alternate this. Exhale and expand your lower ribs backwards and exhale and expand your lower, lift your lower ribs so they move forwards.
And please leave that and rest. Roll to your side if you wish and rest for a few moments. Please come back. And for the moment, imagine that you have some kind of a knob or a handle on your sternum. And please inhale in such a way that if someone was to come along and to lift your sternum directly forward to the ceiling, so that you inhale in such a way that you lift your sternum directly forward. And observe as you lift your sternum forward, what happens to the width of your ribs behind. Find out whether you sense yourself becoming narrower or wider. And please change this and imagine now that someone presses your sternum in such a way that they press your sternum directly backwards towards your spine behind toward the floor. And inhale please in such a way that your sternum is pressed backwards. And as you make this movement, observe what happens to the width of your back behind. With which movement of your sternum does your back become narrower? And with which movement does it become wider? Please alternate this movement. Inhale once in such a way that your sternum is lifted forward. And inhale once in such a way that your sternum is pressed backwards so that you can explore how this changes the shape of your torso and changes the width of the space behind your back or the width of your back and your relationship to the space behind you. It's interesting how words can deceive us. Please exhale now as if someone is pressing your sternum backwards toward your spine, backwards toward the floor. Once or twice, exhaling. You can watch and observe how your inhalation comes in and changes the internal shape of your torso. And then make a movement that may not be so familiar to you. Exhale and move your sternum directly forward. It somehow goes against the way that your diaphragm works.
Exhale and move your sternum forward. Please alternate this. Alternate once your sternum moving forward as you exhale, and one time press, being pressed backwards as you exhale. Doing nothing for the inhalation, it just comes. And leave this again for the moment and rest and again observe your sense of composure. Perhaps you might call it your mood or your emotional state. Notice if it's not possible to simply keep words from forming. Now please inhale in such a way that you fill your chest. And as you fill your chest, draw your abdomen back and up and in. And then please inhale in such a way that you expand your abdomen and you contract your chest. You make a big balloon with your abdomen. And alternate this, inhale once, expand your chest by contracting your abdomen and the next time expand your abdomen by contracting your chest, while contracting your chest. And please now hold your breath. Inhale, expand your chest, hold your breath. And please make this reciprocal movement that you know how to make of contracting your chest and expanding your abdomen and expanding your and contracting your abdomen and expanding your chest. Go back and forth in this reciprocal movement for a moment. And as you make this, this reciprocal movement, sense it on the inside of your torso, inside your chest, and on the inner, inner wall of your abdomen. Sense the movement to the front of yourself. And then would you please change this and sense the movement along the inner part of your spine from your sacrum up to the top of your shoulders so that you make this rolling movement along the inner ribs along your back.
And then please make this movement to the front and back, that this whole wave that you sense it across your ribs behind and you sense it in the front of your chest. So this whole movement moves both to the front and back. Now for one last movement, please. Please make a movement that inhales into, into the most dense possible place. It's like everything you inhale and inhale and inhale into a single point within yourself. And you wait for a moment after the inhalation and then exhale in such a way that you expand outward, in every direction, forward, backwards, sides, dimensionally, in each direction, inhale into a single point, exhale and expand outward. and change this one last moment. Exhale into a single point and inhale outward. and leave it and be quiet doing nothing you know and simply experience the space within yourself. <clears throat> Please take a moment and whenever you're ready, come to stand again. And observe for a moment your sense of yourself in space. Notice if there's some sense, a different sense of dimension, different sense of spaciousness, different way that you're not bound by the uh, historical way of knowing yourself. And take a moment to notice this, the global nature of this breath.
And watch what happens if you tilt yourself a little forward toward your toes. Observe what happens to the change in the tone within yourself and what happens to this breath. Just a little. It just means take your whole torso and just tilt it a little forward. It's not to round. It just means take your torso and tilt a little bit. You see, as soon as you tilt, you'll find that your toes begin to grab the floor. The moment that your toes take the floor to, ca to catch you, just watch what happens to the tone. And then please go back a tiny little bit too far into your heels and sense that what happens to this quality. And find the place that's not too far forward or too far back where you can sense that this global quality of your breath, the front and the back, is available to you. The sense of length that comes with this quality. And find out what happens if you shift a little too far to one foot or the other. When you lose the sense, tiny, What's the earliest moment that you can sense yourself losing the quality? How do you develop the sensitivity within yourself that you can improve the quality of what you're doing in the first moment? Our nervous system is built to change habits in the single go. It means a clarity in the will, ability to perceive what we're doing and to suspend it. Take a moment and collapse the arch on one foot a little bit so that you just collapse your foot just a little bit so that you sag and watch what happens. And then gradually grow out of it Bring your foot under you in such a way that it invites this breath to just be there. And then collapse your other foot so that there's a small sagging, a way in which you fall into yourself a little. And slowly come out of that so that again, this global breath begins to be available, immediately available. All right, please leave it and walk around and explore walking in such a way that you can invite this quality of breath step by step. What will you do within yourself to make it so that as you walk from one foot to the next, that this quality is available? This is the second opportunity. The first opportunity if we came from sitting to standing, here's another opportunity to begin to play with what does it mean to be in the clearest, clearest organization that the support comes through us in such a clear way that our breath and our sense of length is continuously available to us. All right, we'll leave this for a few moments. Give, before you take a, have a tea or something or take a little moment, just be with yourself a few moments. Really sink in this before you become social. And we can put the mats away. So you can breathe and put the mats away. <laughs> Don't worry about the tables yet. We may not get to them. We'll see. We'll see.